But if you do, it could invalidate your warranty. And another factor to bear in mind is if you're going to be utilizing SSD cache in your NAS, that could potentially increase your terabytes written over time. <laughs> Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to tackle a slightly trickier subject than I normally would. In fact, so much so that I'm going back to the old days of using a tablet because there are so many variables in this video to take into consideration. Now, a little while ago, I don't know if you caught it, I did a quick hardware software kind of review of the Seagate Ironwolf SSD for NAS. And I mentioned on several occasions about the comparison I'm going to be making with the Samsung 860 series. Now, both of these are currently available, and right now, at the time of recording this video, the Samsung series of SSDs is predominantly the SSD of choice in NAS. But that's largely because there's never been an SSD produced for NAS users. Now, once again, I am going to be doing speed tests and caching tests with both of these drives on some Synology and QNAP units around me in the background here. But for now, we're gonna look at a general overview of these two ranges and compare a number of their specifications and their details and you know a lot of stuff about them all the way down to the NAN chip level to find out which one of these is best for you. So first and foremost, before we go any further, it's worth mentioning that in the description is a link to this NAS Compare article that details everything so if you don't want to sit for this long video go to that description it's all there and you can take lots of breaks throughout the whole thing to digest all this information but otherwise let's go so first and foremost why would you need an ssd in a nas in brief we mentioned three user case scenarios the most common ones these days first and foremost ssd caching the ability to have an, uh, a portion of solid state drive media to back up your existing hard drive array of storage and speed up with the caching and the handling of data in the background. Frequently and more commonly accessed files will either automatically or manually be copied to the SSDs and therefore making these common access files a great deal faster internally which you can then take advantage of externally with the right connection on your NATs. Uh, the next user case scenario that people find that is is with content creators like photo and video editors that alongside a large storage area made of hard drives in a RAID 5 or RAID 6 they have two or more SSDs in a RAID 0 or RAID 1 or RAID 5 with more SSDs that are used for editing. This is fast access data, which when they're editing files on the go with third party software such as um, you know, uh, Final Cut, Adobe, that sort of thing. And then these files, these completed files, when they're done on live editing over 10 GBE on the SSD, are then moved to the hard drives once again automatically or manually for you know, um, distribution, sharing, and more from those standard hard drives, and of course, archiving. And that's one common way that people use SSDs. The final one is a much more enterprise level usage scenario called flash. In flash servers, these are predominantly used for massively high IOPS, and we'll get onto that later on, as well as AI and deep learning and um, you know, um, hypothetical physical um, operations where people need to simulate things in a fast environment and these, with these these are pure ssd only environments that you find ssds being used in nas so these are the three most common user case scenarios of ssds being used in nas and both the seagate iron wolf nas series of drives the iron wolf 110 which i'm going to try and stand up without knocking over throughout the course of this video along with the samsung 860 series of pro and evo drives are designed for. So, moving forward, you know what, let's put them both against the white background. Nah, and I've dropped them already. Now, nah, screw it, leave it for the rest of the video. But, um, next we can talk to an about another question that was on my previous video. Why should we even care about SATA-based SSDs when NVMe SSDs are becoming a little bit more common and a lot faster? Well, there aren't actually that many NASs that support NVMe right now. I think there's less than five or six. There's the you know Synology DS1019, um, um, uh, the 918 Plus, the RS1619, and from QNAP, you've got NASes such as the TVS XT series, and of course their QM2 series of cards where you can attach NVMe drives. But for the most part, the um, the external output 1GB and 10GB of NAS alongside CPUs that they're using aren't really made to take advantage or even compatible with NVMe storage. That's why Seagate have released a SATA-based 
NAS SSD. They already have NVMe drives out there in the form of their Nitro series of drives and a newer Fire CUDA series of NVMe drives. Same thing with Samsung. Samsung have a series, I'm going to try and stand these up again. Samsung have a series of very popular, well known NVMe drives for gaming known as the 970 and the 960 series. So those are two that are available. Let's see if we'll leave that there. So moving on forward from that, we can talk about these drives. It's probably one of the most important deciding factors for a number of you out there. Unfortunately, it's going to be price. Because these drives, although full prices aren't currently available right now, we do have uh, still awaiting official confirmation prices of the new Seagate drives and how they compare against the currently available 860 series from Samsung. So they should be on screen right now. But to summarize, the Evo drives price per gigabyte is significantly lower as low as 55 pounds for the 250 gig model and if you go all the way up to 4 tb that's four you know over technically 4,000 gigabytes it's just over half a grand 530 quid and of course none of those prices involve that however once you move into the pro series the enterprise quality 860 drives that's where we see the similarities you know become very very apparent and the Iron Wolf series of SSD drives is comparable in price and in some cases lower than that of the Samsung 860, uh, 860 Pro series of drives. So in terms of price per gigabyte, if that is the most you know important deciding factor for you, you're going to go for those Evos and you're going to stay using them to this day. But if it's a price and performance, things get a little bit more complex later in this comparison. Because once we move forward from price per gigabyte, we can look at factors such as the NAND type. Now, NAND are the chips that are on SSD. Whereas hard drives use platters and an arm that was moving between them to read that data. The reason SSDs are so fast is because data is laid out on a series of chips on a little board there with a controller that handles it all. And these are called NAND chips, N-A-N-D. Now, the Samsung series of eight, the Samsung 860 series of SSD and the Seagate Iron Wolf 110 drives use different kinds of NAND. Samsung use MLC NAND, whereas Seagate utilize TLC NAND. And the distinction is, and again, hopefully this is on the screen right now, um, the 860s and their MLC, known as multi-level cell, and I'm gonna read this direct from tablet to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, effectively, it's about multi-layers and how much data you can put on those individual chips. Um, Again, old series of SSD first generation used SLC. Um, and again, this newer series of NAND is just preferred for consumer and indeed early um, enterprise level SSDs as well. It's lower in price than some of the MAD series of NAND chips out there. And it's definitely more reliable overall because of the way the data is being read from continu continuously on those disks. It's nowhere near as you know durable in the long term as some of the top end SSD, but in a SATA SSD in a NAS, you're not really going to feel that. Now, with regard to the uh, the Seagate series of drives with their TLC or triple level um, cell NAND chips, again you've got three bits per cell. So again, not quite as comprehensive in terms of the information readily available per chip when they're being read from by the controller. And you will notice later on in the IOPS that does take a bit of a hit on behalf of the Samsung. But it doesn't make a grand amount of difference in a NAS environment. It's suitable for consumer grade SSDs, the NAND that are going to be using that. And that's why they're present here in these NAND drives here, uh, in these Seagate Iron Wolf drives here, because that's who they're aimed at. And this goes back once again to those NVMe versus SATA SSD utilized devices. Um, and again, the read-write cycles of these do typically seem to be shorter, at 3,000 to 500 cycles, uh, 5,000 cycles, 3,000 to 5,000 cycles per cell on those TLC NAND compared with the MLC ones. So you've got to give a little bit of an advantage there to the Samsung series of drives because they're using a newer generation and far more comprehensive level of NAND. But once again, in most NAS user case environments, you are not going to see that advantage. Um, Moving forward from that, I should touch on MTBF mean time between failure, but to be perfectly honest, even though the Seagate drives do rate higher at 2 million compared with, I believe, 1.5 million on the Samsung drives, uh, Samsung 860 drives, 
1.5 million respectively on both of them, it doesn't really make a grand amount of difference between the Seagate and the Samsung Drive. So I mention it that Seagate's uh, mean time to failure is significantly better, but it's not hugely important in this user case scenario. Another keen area that a lot of you need to really keep an eye on, particularly the way warranties have been changing as well, is TBW, terabytes written. Now, this is effectively the amount of data over the entire lifespan of that disk that will be written, just basically sent to that drive. So it doesn't matter what the overall capacity is because you're always going to delete and add stuff over time. And an SSD, because of the NAND chips and the way they're constructed, can only be written to a certain number of times because of degradation. Um, onto those chips and because of that uh, the Samsung series of drives and indeed the Seagate series of drives but they make less, less of an attempt to put this to your attention although they come with a warranty they also have a, that alongside that the maximum terabytes written that they commit to before if it exceeds that number they deem that drive may not be as stable now in the case of Samsung series of Evo drives these range from as much as uh, from as low as 150 uh, terabytes written on the Evo series, on the Pro series going all the way up to 4,800 terabytes written. And this does change depending on the capacity you go for. But the number seems to be significantly higher on every single denominator, every single one of those uh, capacities with the Seagate series of drive going all the way up to 7,000 terabytes written. Now, do bear in mind that as good as some warranties are, and all of these drives have five years of warranty, if your drive has got a recorded terabytes uh, written um, number that's higher than the one stated on their website, this can invalidate your warranty because they will say that we've given you the warranty on this drive to that level of right. It will be incredibly hard to exceed that number, don't get me wrong. But if you do, it could invalidate your warranty. And another factor to bear in mind is if you're going to be utilizing SSD cache in your NAS, that could potentially increase your terabytes written over time. You would really have to be hitting it hard. But if you're using 24 seven um, access to that NAS all the time with those numbers, bear in mind that the terabytes written factor can go higher and higher. And in a RAID environment, that can also add to that too. But in terms of terabytes written, the Seagate drives are definitely the best overall. Now moving forward from that, we can talk about DWPD, data writes per day. And this is effectively what they say in a 24 hour cycle is the maximum amount of uh, data you can write to this drive effectively and efficiently over time in a 24 hour cycle. What that means in real terms is if you know your drive could be 500 gigabytes in size, but if your drive doesn't have the threshold to take 500 gigs of data being written to it per day, and you intend to flat, you know, flush this drive every day, this could be a huge deciding factor for you. For example, if you're once again using SSD cache environments, and particularly those out there that work in AI, deep learning, or situations where data has been constantly created and destroyed over time, um, the daily writes per day is a very important factor. And I'm pleased to say that the Seagate drives have by far the highest reported of that. Now, most of the time when you do see DWPD, you will notice it is given to you in a decimal figure because 1.0 DWPD is effectively the entire capacity right per day. So you will generally always find a decimal place figure between 0 0.1 and 1. Very rarely does it exceed 1. And I'm pleased to say that the Seagate drives arrive with one, apparently 1 1.0 daily writes per day. So again, do bear that in mind with the Samsung drives arriving at 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 Evo and Pro respectively. Now, there are other factors like SSD trim, but we're not going to pay too much attention to those because they're not really hugely influential in NAS. And that's what really this video is focused on, these drives being used in a NAS environment. Now, in terms of IOPS and typical read-write, this is where things get very, very different. In terms of read and write, these drives are very similar indeed, with the exception of smaller SSDs in the IronWolf 110 uh, range from Seagate. Because on the whole, all of these drives report in excess of 500 megabytes per second read-write, respectively. Again, you will have to have an optimal environment for that. And over NAS, you have lots of bottlenecks to bear in mind, such as the CPU and the external connection, as well as raiding them together. You could raid any, of, any four of these drives together with a half-decent CPU 
and out of 10 GPU, you'll get 1,000 megs easy. But again, it all depends on the operational environment. And IOPS are where things differ massively. Now, you guys that are looking at AI operations and looking at intensive workflows of uh, data being created on the fly all the time directly to these disks, might be surprised to hear that the Seagate Ironwolf had the lowest IOPS rating of these three. And again, that's because of that TLC NAND that they're using being consumer grade. Um, it was rated across the capacities uh, uh, between 55,000 and 85,000 IOPS. And IOPS stand for Individual Operations, or as they state it, Input Output Operations Per Second. So effectively, the exchange. Now, uh, 55,000 to 85,000 IOPS on that Seagate drive. I was a little surprised at that. I expected higher. Whereas even the Evo series of drives arrived with 98,000 and above IOPS. And again, that's at the optimal capacity. Same goes the Pro series, the Samsung 860 Pro, that arrived at 10, uh, 100,000 IOPS rated. So again, that is ran random read IOPS with random write IOPS being much the same. And indeed, even lower on those Samsung, on the Seagate uh, 110 drives too. So again, that's definitely a deciding factor for you enterprise level users and it's another reason why the samsung i'm sorry the seagate iron wolf 110 drives are i think far more aimed at um low um home and smb users rather than the high-end enterprise seagate clearly have decided that they want those top-end people to buy nitro to buy fire cougar and once again because they've stuck with that sata connection and that form of nand these are definitely ranged at people that want to use them photo video editing, as I said at the top of the video, caching on small, medium and large NAS devices, or generally for quieter, smaller NASs, such as the silent NAS series from QNAP. But if you are looking at higher end SSDs, if you are looking at high IOPS for virtualized environments and large scale AI ready devices, then neither of these drives are going to be suitable. And that's when you move over to NVMe. But for NAS users right now, I do still think the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drives, you know, these SSDs are pretty damn good. And at that price threshold, although they're not as competitively priced as Evo drives from Samsung, they're definitely, I think, better for you in the mid range and long run for you guys out there with NAS devices that want to create multi-tiered cache more than the Evo. If you are interested, this entire guide and more information that I haven't even discussed here is in the article below. Do check that out and do check out and wait for the speed test coming very, very soon on these discs. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Stay tuned for those speed tests. I know I haven't featured in this video, but it would have been like a 30, 40 minute video if I chucked it all in. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.